Welcome to Lecture Online, and now we're going to take a look at the summary, all seven methods of solving two simultaneous equations in one snapshot. And it's not very often that you see all seven methods illustrated right there side by side, but it helps to look at them that way because then you can see when one method is preferable over another. So here are the seven methods. The first method is using a table of values. You have two equations. You plug in values for x and get the corresponding values for y for the two equations until the two converge into a single number. Notice that if you started going into a negative direction for x, the two numbers for y would get farther and farther apart, so you go in the wrong direction. If you go in the correct direction, you can see that the two numbers get closer and closer together until they are the same, and then the solution is x equals 3, y equals 1, like in this example. The second one is simply graphing it. When you do that, you have to change your equation to the y equals mx plus b format, m being the slope, b being the y-intercept. You then graph the two equations, and simply where the two lines cross, that's where you have the solution. You don't always get the exact answer, unless you do it very carefully on graph paper, and it's easy to find the exact answer, but sometimes an approximate answer is good enough. But again, that's how you do it, and here you can see the graphical representation of what you're trying to do. Linear equations can be represented by lines on an x-y axis, and so therefore where they cross, that's where you have the solution to your problem. The third method is taking the two equations and simply setting them equal to each other. To do that, you have to write them both in this format, and then since y1 equals this and y2 equals that, where the y values are the same, you can then solve for x, so set the two y values equal, so that means you can set the two right side of the equations equal to each other, solve for x, then plug that x back into one of the two equations to solve for y. And when you do that, again, you get the right answer. The substitution method is usually really handy when one equation is written like this and the other equation is written like that. You simply can take x, what x is equal to in terms of y, and substitute it into the first equation, eliminating that var var variable x, and then simply solving for y, and there you go. That's how you find y, then you plug the y value back into one of the two equations to get the corresponding x. It's probably easier to put in this equation because it's already written in the form where you can solve for x. The fifth method is called the elimination method. Here's your two uh, equations. You put them uh, one on top of each other, but again, notice the format. You write them as the x and the y values on one side and the constants on the other side. Notice that you have a minus y in the top equation and a plus y in the bottom equation. When you add the two equations together, the y's drop out. You only have x values, so you solve for x. Then you plug that x back into one of your two equations to solve for y. The sixth, equation, the sixth method is called the matrix method, or using matrices. Again, just like you did here, you have to write the equation in this form. Notice you can write these two equations in a matrix format. This matrix times this matrix equals this matrix, which is the exact same as writing these two equations out like that. It's exactly the same thing, but it's a matrix format, which means that you can solve for x and y by then moving this matrix to the right side, making it the inverse of the matrix, times that matrix. Now all you have to do is find the inverse of the matrix. So you write the matrix, the A matrix, in this format, write the unit matrix on the right side, and then you work through a, step, a series of steps to get the left side to look like the unit matrix, and the right side will then be the inverse of the matrix, which you plug in here, and then when you multiply these two together, you get the values for x and y. It's a little lengthy, so if you want to know exactly how to do the problem, then go back a few videos to see how it's actually done in more detail. The final method is called the method of determinants. Again, you put the two equations in the exact same format. You take the coefficients of the x and y's and put them in one determinant. Then you take the same coefficients, but you replace the x coefficients by the two constants, 5 and 4. Then you take a third matrix, which you take the y coefficients, replace it by the 5 and the 4. Then you solve the three determinants simply by multiplying these two together and then subtract minus when you multiply those two together. So it's 2 times 1 minus the minus 1 times 1, and you get a value. You do that for all three matrices, uh, or I should say determinants, because they're not matrices, they're determinants. And then to find the value for x, you take the a determinant divided by d, and then to find the value for y, you take the b determinant divided by d, and you get the x and y values that, again, the solution to the point where the two lines cross. So the seven methods all right there in front of you together gives you a really nice overview of how to solve two linear equations in the, in the you know, very important different ways. And each one of them is, again, unique to a specific situations. They lend themselves to, to using the equations the way they're represented 
and it makes it for a really nice way to find the perfect method for you in each situation of how to solve for linear equations. And that's how we do that.